This poem is titled Sacred Ridges Above Diamond Creek. Um, it's a poem that Chris Wells Crabbe dedicated to Les Murray, who was or is a contemporary uh, Australian poet uh, of the 20th century. And the, the title itself um, uh, is an interesting one because he's chosen to, to play on this a little bit with the, the structure and the form of this poem. So it's sacred to Aboriginal and Indigenous cultures here in Australia. And what he's done however, with the poem itself is uh, structure in a format that actually alludes to uh, Christian uh, biblical texts. Uh, in particular, this one uh, reads almost like uh, the litany of saints that is really common um, in the, the Catholic or in the Protestant uh, church. So uh, we've got this really clear biblical illusion that comes to the fore. Um, and in particular, uh, structured in the way that it um, includes the starts of each of the lines with two, 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 as if it's <clears throat> referencing each of those different groups um, and listing them out um, in praise. The poem uh, is one continuous um, structure, so we don't have uh, different sections that are clearly discernible. He works his way through, um, and as the, the poem progresses, um, there's different references to both um, Australian native culture, but also um, the colonial element that is now part of this country's history. He begins, I want to make some kind of gesture of alien response, response no longer alien, response finding its feet. So a really interesting opening just to start off with, um, a gesture of alien response. This alien response is, is alien because of the fact that he himself, as a, a migrant, as somebody who's come from... Uh, Great Britain, he's alien to the native Australia. And so he's, he's referencing this in the broader context of most of the people who live here. But what's really interesting is the way that he continues to clarify that in the second line you know, a response no longer alien, because now we've been here for a couple of hundred years, a response finding its feet. You know, this is a country still developing, still changing. Salute with my feet and my hands and heart to the totem beasts by whose names this distinct district was patched and pieced like a tartan. And then we begin this list that he uh, starts to go through of the native um, native animals and the flora and the fauna. And it is it's this catalogue almost of Australiana that we have. And it occurs in a couple of different spots throughout this poem. He says, To echidna formed like a child's drawing from an ex of an explosion, to Dingo, long driven away by Mr. Fox in his red hunting coat. So this allusion here to, um, to the British upon their arrival. To Platypus, the shy, the watery, secretive. To Magpie, sweetest yelp of the morning. To sober-suited Shrike Thrush epitome of musical variation, dour tortoise like a stone, 
and vibrant kingfisher, smart as paint. So we have this, this list, this catalogue, if you like, um, of the fauna here in Australia. Um, and those allusions, like I said, to, to the British invasion that came. These are thin-skinned sandstone hill rows, remaining shaggy with yellow box and stringy bark despite their undercoat of heedless houses and the gutters still gush to tangle-throated creeks. So I pay my spilt tribute to all those neglected totems, to clever-tailed possum with his unspeakable voice, to willy wagtail in flight, a whole symbolic system, to kangaroo whose name at least we dared to retain here, to square koala, cosily hunched no longer in managum forks along main road to black bream and snake, to kookaburra, raucous herald of fire's daily return, to the wildcat whom I do not know, to the furred and curious wombat, to you all, primal kin of the region I choose to live in, each genius loci now displaced by incomprehensible names and grids, though the cunning birds secularised remain, I yield you primacy now, you and those Adamic makers who prowled around these scrabble-shingled hills before me, whom we may choose to ignore at our own cost, hail and farewell, but then, after all, hail. Now, the poem doesn't end there, but before we move on, that was one continuous sentence that we've just worked through. Um, and in it, and, and in the structure that he's chosen to to place here. It's a celebration of sorts. It's a celebration of what is found here in native Australia. And the fact that it is this this non-stop flow in terms of syntax is it's this, this outpouring of tribute, which we can see in the in the way that he's structured the poem in this part. Some of the language that he uses too, you know, reinforces um, that feeling, that feeling of, um, you know, the fact that this this landscape has been uh, invaded, has been taken over, um, and you see that um, in some of the language that he chooses to use just here. So, you know, despite the undercurrent of heedless houses um, and the gutters that still gush to tangle-threaded creeks, the neglected totems, right? So there's uh, a slight commentary coming to the floor. slight commentary that he's making there and it comes back again a little bit later on when he talks about you know each genius loci now displaced by incomprehensible names and grids you know so uh, the idea of modern uh, civilization the development of cities But also uh, the fact that in some of our major capitals, we have not chosen to continue using the indigenous names, but have replaced them with essentially British names.
and again that's alluded to even in this sort of terminology here where he says it's been secularized the traditional heritage has been replaced but his position in all of this is really clear you know, i yield you primacy now he's paying respect to that um, and really interesting um, i guess clash of ideas you know he references the adamic makers so that's um, yeah, it's a Jewish Christian reference. To the, the to the first peoples. But we've got this interesting juxtaposition between him uh, structuring this in a way that's reminiscent of Christianity um, and Christian biblical tradition, but referencing uh, native culture, Aboriginal or Indigenous culture. So it's really interesting juxtaposition that's occurring within the structure of uh, this particular poem. The fact that he chooses to end this second last section with these statements here, whom we may choose to ignore at our own cost, hail and farewell, but then after all, hail, is uh, quite the political statement that he's making. Uh, again, this is coming at a time when there is a lot of discourse around Indigenous rights um, and acknowledging the, the First Nations people of this country. So his um, reflection upon it is both a celebration but also an acknowledgement of the fact that there does need to be some more um, done by the Australian people in relation to this. He chooses to end... Uh, very briefly compared to the section that we've just um, the section that we've just seen uh, we see end stopping in the very short structured sentences that we have which means you know he's coming to a conclusion yours is the first magic Yours are the names of things. I cannot divest myself of this curious tongue, but I lay down my arms. Now, the curious tongue that he's referring to is, you know, English. Foreign to the indigenous people. Um, and the, the the statement at the end, but I lay down my arms, it's it's um, a colloquial term. It, it, it implies surrender, but it also implies um, or alludes to the fact that the entry of the colonial empire into this country was a very bloody one. And so it has quite a lot of uh, connotation to it, that last statement. Overall, though, Chris Wells Crab is alluding to the fact that we can't really change the colonial history of this country. Um, it's happened. What the poem in and of itself looks at more so, I think, is that we can at least acknowledge what came before. We can celebrate what came before in terms of the cultural heritage of Australia and move towards doing that more so than we are now. And so that's the poem Sacred Ridges Above Diamond Creek by Chris Wallace Crabb.